we're going to find the extrema of this function. And we know how to do that. We know we need to find a critical number, right? Because that's where, where relative extrema are. They're at critical numbers. But if we're just looking on paper and we're not looking at a graph or anything, we're just looking, not at, on paper, but we're just looking at the numbers and the functions, if we find a critical number, we don't really have any, any reference. We just know it's a critical number. So we're going to use the first derivative test to find out, well, if we know to the left of the critical number, so and coming this way, if we know coming that way the function's decreasing, and then coming this way it's increasing, well, then we know that we have a, a minimum point. So our, our critical number is no longer just a point floating in space. It actually, if we look to the left and to the right of it, and we figure out if the function is decreasing or increasing, we can figure out exactly if it's a maximum or a minimum. And that's what they want us to find, the extrema. If, for some reason, we, we, we were looking at this and we figured out the function to the left is decreasing, and then to the function to the right is decreasing, well then we actually we, we know we don't have an extrema because it's just going to be a little spot where the function was horizontal. It won't be a maximum or a minimum. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the first derivative test to, to test intervals around critical numbers in order to, to figure out exactly what's going on without looking at a graph. So we're not going to be using graphs. We might at the very end if we have time. Just to, just to bolster what we did algebraically. Okay, so first things first, we know we're going to definitely have to take a derivative. So. Before we take this derivative, I'm going to rewrite this function as x squared plus x to the negative 2. Where did that come from? Well, hopefully you can see that this over here is just, you can rewrite this as x to the fourth over x squared plus 1 over x squared. And now hopefully it's more clear where, where I got that from. I just did this division and rewrote this as a negative exponent. And if you jumped right in and, and were thinking to use the quotient rule, you're going to have a little bit of a mess where this is, this is going to be a little bit neater. Okay, so let's take the derivative here. So this is 2x, uh, and then I'm just going to write this as minus 2x to the negative third. And this will be equal to, we'll factor out a 2, and we'll have x minus 1 over x cubed. And we're just doing algebra here, and then that will be equal to 2 times x to the 4th minus 1 over x cubed. So if you're wondering how did I get from this step to that step, well, all I did was I realized the common denominator was going to be x cubed. So I was going to have to multiply x by x cubed over x cubed. So I got x to the fourth over x cubed, and then I just combined them. So hopefully just from hearing me say that, you could either imagine in your head or, or pause and re-listen and write, it, write the steps down and, and see how that works out. Okay, so this is the derivative. This is the derivative here. Now let's, let's move on from there and find the critical numbers. That's going to be a, a whole different step. So this was, the first thing was just rewriting the, uh, rewriting the function to make the derivative easier. Two was actually taking the derivative, and now three, we're going to be finding the critical numbers. So a critical number happens when the derivative is zero, which means x to the fourth minus one is going to equal zero. So we just set that equal to zero, and now we can use the difference of squares. This is really x squared squared minus one squared. And hopefully you've seen this happen. This is like the easiest case for when, when you have something squared squared, if that makes any sense. And hopefully you've seen that several times. Anyways, this factors to x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. And now we just have the difference of squares again. And we have x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 equals 0. Okay. So now we, we 
hopefully you can clearly see our critical numbers are going to be when x equals 1, negative 1, and, and so far that's it. This will yield imaginary numbers, meaning non-real roots of, of this derivative. x squared plus 1, if you solve for that, you'd get, you would get plus or minus i, or, the, or in other words, the square root of 1. Uh, sorry, negative 1 which of course is imaginary and we don't we don't consider it. Okay, so that was when the numerator equals zero. There's another way we could have a, a critical number and that's if the derivative doesn't exist. So if we plugged zero in for x, we would get we would get negative two over zero. So that seems like a critical number until we realize that zero was not part of the original domain. So up here we already can't use 0 in the original function. So if we can't use 0, then, then we don't use it as a critical number, meaning we can't plug 0 into our original function, so it's, it's not a critical number. It is going to be important because we know that there's a vertical asymptote, so we definitely want to consider 0, uh, x equals 0, so I'm going to write that here. But just to be clear, it's, it's more of a technical distinction, but it's not a critical number, it happens to be a vertical asymptote of the original function. Okay, so let me save this derivative to the side and, and then make some space. Uh, there we go, that, that will work for me for now and for you hopefully. Okay, so what do we do now? What's our next step? Well, we're going to make a, a table. So we're going to make a table, and what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, okay, this should be good, I hope, I think. If you guys watch, uh, or, or watch and or like or listen to Mitch Hedberg, I just saw a special of his not that long ago, and Man, that guy is funny. I mean, I already, I always knew that. I've always liked him, but he was telling jokes I'd never heard him tell before. Um, or I had, you know, that was great. Anyways, okay, so what are we doing here? Um, intervals. Okay, so we our critical numbers were negative 1, 1, and then we knew that 0 was a point of interest, even though it's not a critical number. But it's an asymptote, so it's gonna it's gonna end up in the graph. We want to look to the left of the asymptote and to the right of the asymptote, so it's gonna end up in as our test intervals. So we're gonna go from negative infinity to negative one, our first critical number, from negative one to zero, the the asymptote, from zero the asymptote to one, our second critical number, and then we don't have any more critical numbers, so we're just gonna go one to infinity. Okay. And then we're going to pick test values to, to test in these intervals. So let's pick easy numbers like negative 2. Um, this one might be 1 half between neg uh, negative 1 half. This one will be 1 half, regular 1 half. And then this one, let's pick positive 2. So probably the easiest numbers we could find in those intervals. And then now we have to, so this is, let me just label this. This is test. And then we have to determine the sine, so sine of the derivative. And to do that, all we do is plug our test value into, into the derivative. So negative 2 to the 4th is 16, and then minus 1 times 2, that's all positive, over, over negative x cubed. So if you cube a negative, it stays negative, so that will be over negative 8. So this, this will be negative. I'm running out of time, so I, I think we'll have to just, why don't we do all, all the rest of this in the next video? See you then.